You know, all across the country and undoubtedly in each of your communities, there are unsung individuals, women and men who tirelessly work to create a community where factors like race, income, gender inequity, or excuse me, gender identity, sexual orientation, education, and geography don't determine who has the opportunity to be healthy and who gets left behind. These individuals often work behind the scenes in partnership with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, we wanna shine a light on these inspiring men and women. So this evening or afternoon, as Doug mentioned, it's my distinct privilege to announce the winner of the fifth annual Robert Wood Johnson Foundation National Civic League Award for Health Equity. This award recognizes those working to promote health equity through resident engagement and systemic change efforts. I'm so proud to announce that the winner of this year's RWJF NCL Award for health equity is Dr. Tzu In Wu from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Dr. Wu is a healthcare practitioner and researcher, beloved community leader, and serves as the director of the Center for Health Disparities, Innovations, and Studies at Eastern Michigan University, where she's also a professor and program director for EMU's School of Nursing. Dr. Wu has worked diligently for over 15 years to transform healthcare systems including to provide badly needed healthcare programs culturally tailored to the Asian community, particularly those traditionally underserved, to improve their healthcare knowledge and access. She's also contributed an incredible volume of empirical research to better include the representation of Asian voices in healthcare research. In addition to being recognized this evening, Dr. Wu will be receiving a $3,000 cash prize and be recognized in a ceremony at a later date by RWJF Foundation. Congratulations, Dr. Wu. Turn it over to you. Oh, I think you might be on mute, Dr. Wu. Thank you, Emily, for this very kind introduction. And um, good evening, everyone. What a privilege to be the recipient of 2020 Robert Wood Johnson Foundation National Civic League Health Equity Award. I'm truly humbled by and grateful to be selected by the National Civic League, the pioneer organizations that advances the civic engagement in this country for more than a century. Special thanks to National Civic League for recognizing Michigan's health equity work in the Midwest, where we do not have the large Asian Pacific American population like other states such as California, and New York. My deepest appreciation goes to my colleague, Dr. Ellis Renville, who nominated me for this amazing award. I'm truly grateful to be part of the wonderful team at Eastern Michigan University Center for Health Disparity Innovation and Studies and tremendous support from our university, including our university president, Dr. Smith, and colleague and numerous community partners and leaders who have inspired me, shaped my work, and helped me to realize the potential of our work together can truly make a difference. As an immigrant from Taiwan for more than two decades ago, I'm always curious about where the terminology model minority came from. I never feel about any special power as an Asian American. Instead, what reminds me is a Hmong woman that I met during our health fair who had just had her first blood sugar check with a level of 300, while you know the normal is less than 100. It also reminds me of a South Asian woman die on her 40s with a stage three breast cancer would have a different outcomes if she has gone through regular mammography screening. It was a puzzle to me that why these basic screening, health screening services are so difficult to get for these un underserved Asian Americans. I struggle early on how to convince people in power to also see the needs of underserved Asian Americans. My first report card of D minus came when we tried to rescue the state funding to continue our state breast cervical cancer screening for Asian Pacific Americans back in 2008. 
we were informed by the top health, public health authority, there are other more urgent health priorities needs to stay funding. We lost a battle because we simply do not have the data to back our asks. Well, during that time, when we look for the public health records, reports, and data, oftentimes we find the categories of whites, black, and others. And oftentimes, Asian were lumped into others. Because of lack of a specific um, data available for Asians, I started my crusade to generate research finding to support, advocate, and implement effective health programs. I'm proud to be a community advocate slash researcher comes in second and greatly appreciate the confidence that our participants have on me. When we hosted the listening sessions, our community resident came forward to share with their personal story, which strengthened our understanding on some of the very sensitive topics such as violence. Our recent publications show a very different picture. Despite the enactment of Affordable Care Act, our dedicated bilingual navigators helped thousands of Asian Americans in Michigan getting health insurance. The data, the, the findings show their health is not as healthier as others. So our work continues to deploy culturally sensitive, effective solutions to improve their health and well being. During this unprecedented times, there's so much ahead of us. Change and disruption seem to be the constant. Since the outbreak, many of our community partners came together working with CEDAS from translating and disseminating latest COVID updates, home care information in various Asian languages, delivering care packages to the most groups, such as homeless elderly who live alone. And our team also started telehealth sessions for the underserved population and take actions to prepare our community to address anti-Asian racism and hate. We stand alone in solidarity and embrace it with concerted effort, wisdom, and power. Tonight is a very special time. I'm dedicating this award to those people we, who work with us on this amazing journey. Lastly, this wouldn't be complete without thanking the most important people in my life, my parents who are in Taiwan, their unconditional love and always believe in me, especially my mom who thinks girl can get PhD during those early days which is a very rare concept in Taiwanese culture. And of course, my um, husband, Dr. Chao Wei Wing, and my son, and Li Wing, for their unwavering support, who are always there whenever I need them the most. Thank you so much for this incredible award. Thank you, Dr. Wu, and congratulations. Um, I read the nomination and you have done amazing work to bring care to so many underserved people. So thank you so much for, for your good work. I'd now like